Boy, when I tell you life, there's life in for your boy right now. Uh -huh. Who, yeah. Whoever said that the enemy attacks uh, most fiercely right when you're on the verge of a breakthrough, true words mm. have never been spoken. Something big is happening for me. I'm telling yeah. you, I don't know what it is. I don't know what's coming. Breakthrough's but coming. But something, uh, something is coming for me because... I'm getting it from all directions uh, right about now. Um, Surf Pro was in my house at 3 o'clock in the morning for the third time in feels like three months. Can't be no more than six months. Come on now. Um, had flooding in my basement again, this time from the filtration system. So I was dealing with that in the middle of the night on top of everything else I'm dealing with. Um, so I didn't get a great night's sleep. How was your night, Michael? You look nice and fresh and, ref and refreshed. You look good. You good? Yeah. Everything good? Give me some good news. Yeah. You good? <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, hey. I, I'm good. No, My I, God. I, Woo. I, I Lord imagine, of mercy. I imagine you at three at three o'clock in the morning. At three o'clock in the morning dealing with some stuff. Now, wow. Now, are you a, I know, you. are you a bit of a night owl a little bit? No, I used to be. I, I used to. Well, I mean, look, you know, Michael, come on, man. Because you how were probably times, in the middle of making a trade. Were many, you in the middle of making a trade? Was there a trade? Not this time. <laughs> No, well, I don't want, wait a minute. First of all, I don't want to talk about Dynasty because out of 16 teams, guess who's the last one to pay his dues? Guess okay, who's the one I, who I got you. I, I mean, I got are, you. Are, are, you in the, are you in or you no, out? The, I need to know. Are you in or I'm you in. out? Because this, this is a league of degenerates, and I don't need you half-assing this. Like, I need you yeah. to be all the way in. Like, if you got, if you sorry, got another book been, to write, if you got another book I, exactly. to write, if you got another, if yes. you got another class to teach, if you got another show to do, let me know now, I do. because okay, because all this those is, things. This, you, okay, all those well, things this, are league, actually, this may not be the league for you. This may not be the league for you. Well, congratulations, a lot is happening things, for you right now. You just said. I think I, all apparently we got a lot to catch up happening. on. Apparently yeah. we have a lot to catch up on off camera because a lot's happening in your life right now. Praise God, yeah. that's fantastic. Uh, but so if you're not gonna be all the way in this league, then you need to let me know. No hard feelings. But this is not a league okay. that you can be passive in. You got to be all in in this league. Okay, we can now's a perfect time to release you, and you can go be great somewhere else if you just if you can't mm. fully commit to this league. Um, well, so yeah, ooh, yeah, keep going well, with that because that's what I'm looking for. Hey, you got to be all in, similar to the National Football League, and you need somebody, somebody who's really an angel looking out for you to say, hey, <laughs> go be great somewhere else. Which is all your boy needs to say to Justin Fields, right? That's what yeah. I think. Talk about talk about life, life in, in muddy waters. So my boy, you mean Ryan Poles? Um, yes. Yes. Here, here's what. So we talked about what the Bears should do, and you and I, just to recap for those that may have missed it on our fine YouTube channel, you and I agree that if we were in charge of the Bears front office, going back to our franchise mode, that's what I was referencing. When you asked me if I was a night owl, I was like Michael. You know me. How many sleepless nights did we have falling asleep franchise in franchise mode back in the day? But now that I'm old, though, now that I'm old, I go to sleep about 9, 9.30. I'll be calling Savannah, being like, yo, I need you to come home uh, because I can't wait up for you no more. Like, like adult adulting is real. Like, not my days are so... Dog, I'm in the bed at 9.30, 10 o'clock now. It's crazy. And it just out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. I mean, it's just this adulting is, is wearing me out. Um, so, I, you know, if I would have been making a trade at 3 a.m. with some of my West Coast league mates, wasn't happening last night because I was dealing with Surf Pro and preventing mold and carpet. Okay, back to Ryan Poles. Anyway, so last week we talked, and you and I said that if we were running the Bears franchise, we'd be used to in franchise mode, we would both uh, keep Justin Fields, and I think you may be inclined to, to, to take Marvin Harrison at one if necessary, but ideally trade down, accumulate more picks, and find a way to end up with Marvin Harrison. But you are you and I are both in the trade down camp as much as we like Caleb Williams as a prospect. So that was last week. Combine in Indianapolis is going on right now. Here's Ryan Poles not quite adding clarity, surprise, to what the Bears may be thinking about what to do at quarterback. If you decide to draft a quarterback, what is your motivation to trade Justin before free agency starts, knowing that there might be a free agent? Yeah, again, it just depends on what opportunities pop up. Um, I will say this. Um, I think you guys know me uh, well enough now. I do 
if we go down that road, um, I want to do right by Justin as well. Uh, no one wants to live in gray. Um, I know that's uncomfortable. I wouldn't want to be in that situation either. So uh, we'll gather the information. We'll move um, as quickly as possible. We're not going to be in a rush um, and see what presents itself and what's best for the organization. All right, let me just say, if I haven't said it already lately, I feel like I have. I love Ryan Poles. I love the job he's done since he's come to Chicago. I love how he's built this thing. Having said that, clock's ticking. Be quick, but don't hurry. Yeah. There's a sense of urgency here for a lot of reasons. But what's your read on what Ryan Poles had to say, or maybe even Matt Eberflus and what he had to say, which we didn't play, but um, what you're hearing from the Combine uh, as you read the tea leaves about whether Justin Fields is or is not headed for greener pastures elsewhere. Okay, look, Michael, um, you know, maybe, maybe I'm being too naive with this. I don't think there's going to be a big difference between what, what Justin Fields would get right now if the Bears said, we're out on Justin Fields, or what Justin Fields will bring back the Bears if Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus continue to play this game where, hey, we'll see what happens, and uh, we love Justin, and we just need to evaluate our options. What they're doing is trying to uh, get a market going or maybe drive up the price. I, I think yeah. you, you probably have the difference of, and it, it, it might be five picks. It might be the difference between pick number 75 and pick number 80. I'm really guessing that the, the market for Justin Fields is not gonna change. Teams mm -hmm. are smart. They haven't said Justin Fields is our quarterback. They haven't said the, the magic words for us or for Justin Fields. Well, he knows that he's not going to be there. We know he's not yeah. going to be there. Just go ahead and say, like it. look, it's going to be jump. just it. it Don't we'll, fuck we'll around probably, with it. We'll probably Do it take, expeditiously. <laughs> we think, right, just right. We think Caleb Williams is the best quarterback in this draft. And we'd be happy to take them but hey if somebody wants to come up and make us a deal we'll take a deal whatever it is but they're going to take caleb williams they're going to trade justin fields and they're going to have two great top 10 picks uh to choose from two uh, so one of them be caleb williams and the other one hey who knows wow. wide receiver left tackle you've got you're you're in pretty good shape no matter what you do you're well, in pretty I mean, good shape everybody well i think that goes that's true for both parties. Well, look, everybody's projecting Caleb Williams at one to them. Look, crazy shit happens, man. Like, the third option is they trade Justin Fields and trade the number one overall pick and get a Drake May, a Jaden Daniels, uh, hell, a J.J. McCarthy okay. even. I mean, you know, okay. who knows what happens okay. between now right. and the that, actual right. draft. There's a lot of different ways to play this if you're, if you're Ryan Poles. Smart. Um, you're right. Yeah, and I think what they want to do is A, keep their options open and B, not tip their hand is, is what, you, what you were alluding to just now. Um, I think they're playing this perfectly, but what you're saying... You do? I'll paraphrase. Yeah, and what I'll paraphrase is don't play us for stupid. <laughs> you can play this perfectly, but don't play us for stupid either. Like, like, like we know it when we see it. Why do I think they're playing it perfectly? Yeah, why, 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 two, two questions I want you to answer. I'm going to sit back and listen here. One, why do you think they're okay. playing it perfectly? And then something you said in, in the first minute where you said, mm -hmm. I love the way he's building this thing. Uh, what, what exactly has he built? So that, that's <laughs> why I want you to answer. I, I want okay. you to answer those I'll do, things. I'm going to, I'll, I'll do the, I'll do the, since you hit me with a double barrel question, I'll do the second one yes. first, which is typically what happens. Be covered was unbelievably bare. So maybe, I, let me, no pun intended. Uh, let me um, rephrase and say, I love the way Ryan Poles is going about building this thing. It's not a finished project or product, mm -hmm. but I love the way he's going about it. The cupboard was unbelievably bare when it came to the number of blue chip talent players on the roster when he arrived there. The salary cap situation was for shit. Uh, there weren't a lot of draft picks, future draft picks at his disposal. He's going about cleaning house, getting rid of a lot of older players, uh, bringing in a lot of youth, uh, accumulating draft capital, uh, fixing the salary cap situation, as I've mentioned. And I think the future is, in fact, bright. When you look at the roster, when you look at a lot of the young talent, again, still some holes to be filled. But when you look at a lot of the young talent that he's brought in, I think that future is, is bright. And I think he has an opportunity. This is what we talked about last week. He has an opportunity to... 
uh, make that number one pick from last year that came by virtue of uh, the gift from Lovey Smith and the Houston Texans, uh, make that the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, and just like he got a haul from the Panthers last year, the Panthers did their part by giving him the number one pick again this year. He can flip it again um, and, 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 and create generational wealth uh, and feed mm. families <laughs> in Chicago. So I, I think Ryan Poles has go. built this smartly. And I think he also understands because if the, if, the, if the blueprint is Kansas City, and I think I said this the other day, if the blueprint is Kansas City, it's not just find the next Patrick Mahomes, which many have suggested that Caleb Williams may be. It is create an infrastructure that is ready to support a young quarterback in the same way that Kansas City was when Patrick Mahomes took the mantle from Alex Smith. That's, that's, question, that's the answer to question number two. Did I adequately and, and sufficiently that answer does. that question? That does. Okay. And I, and I, question think, number, yeah, and I think that's fair. Yeah. Yep. Question number one, why do I think they plan it perfectly even if trying to play the rest of us for stupid? Um, maybe let everybody else decide for you. So I, I often tell my, my kids this, um, especially my oldest, as she embarks on her college application process, college selection Which I can't journey. believe. Yeah, tell me about it. Um, wow. Talk about life, life, life coming at you fast, adulting, all of this, man, all of this. Um, I often tell her there's no such thing as a wrong decision. You make a decision and you make it right, okay? In this case for the Chicago Bears, I don't think they can go wrong here. Uh, if they keep Justin Fields and build around Justin Fields, even though we don't know exactly what he is, uh, he's shown enough for you and I to believe that there's something there. Um, if they were to keep Justin Fields and build around him, uh, in the form of maybe trading down from number one and accumulating more assets and to continue to add blue chip talent at other positions and support the quarterback, um, I think that could be a successful formula. If they were to decide to reset yet again at quarterback and trade Justin Fields for and, and replenish the continue to replenish the cupboard with the draft pick or picks that Justin Fields would net, uh, build another quarterback use the picks he's already gotten to build around that quarterback. If, if, if Caleb Williams is in fact generational or come to find out is actually Drake May or, or Jaden Daniels is, is, is the guy that they go, go forward with. Or like I said, JJ McCarthy, if, he's, if he ends up being a riser, I think that could be a successful formula as well. Like they're holding all the cards. They're not just hold, he's not just holding his cards yeah. close to the chest or to the vest, whichever one it is. He's holding all the cards. So best. I really don't think there's a it's best. Is it best? It's best it is best. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I chess best. best. Okay. But, but while we're yeah, on the subject, the but yeah. we, we've argued about this before. You got another think coming. I will die on that hill. I will die on that hill. Have we, have we, we talked about this, right? You know, if you think if you think if you think the Chicago Bears are not going to trade Justin Fields, you got another think coming, not another thing coming. I hate that's a pet peeve. It is another think coming because why would I say if you think and then substitute that with thing? I don't think we talked about it's this. another I've thing I've never heard coming. anybody say that. People say that? What, thing or I've think? I've never heard that. Which, which side are you on? That's what it is. Why wouldn't it be? It's if you think, so say it again. Say it again. If, you, if think, you think the Chicago Bears are not going to trade Justin Fields, then you have another think coming. Okay. I, I've never heard of the think. But I, <laughs> Why would it but be you know thing? Wait, Why would it be thing? The thing? I don't like, like either the, one the of them. The phrase falls flat. The phrase falls flat like if it. you don't pay it off with the think. I don't like this. This has been a pet peeve. <laughs> okay, fine. That's fine. Oh, I mean. You, come on, man. You ain't you, you ain't use that with your kids. You got another thing coming. Another thing coming? No, no. I don't think okay, so. well, that's, that, that's I don't been, think so. I've been. I've been. I was told that my whole young life, and I have repeated it because, yes, as the progressive commercial says, See, that's I it. have become my parents. I also say advertisement, by the way. I, most people say advertisement. I'm, I'm, I'm more oh, British, that's fancy. I guess. I say that's advertisement. Fa yeah, that's that's fancy. That's, so that's what, nice. what the hell do I know? That's nice. What the hell do I know? Yeah, um, advertisement. Yeah, that, you, you like so that. I don't, you like that. That's, that's that good right. stuff. So whether Justin Fields is for sale or not, uh, figuratively speaking, uh, I, don't, I don't think they can go wrong. I don't think they can go wrong because I think 
I, well, they could go wrong by Justin Fields, and that's where Ryan, Ryan Poles is right. They could do wrong by him, which maybe tells me that they've already made a decision. But like, what if, what if you get a better deal for the number one pick or one that you just can't turn down? What if you get a, another godfather offer for the number one pick and it, and, it, yeah. and it outweighs trading Justin Fields for a second round pick? Or what if another team doesn't want to give you, um, you know, what you think Justin Fields is worth? Or what if as the evaluation process See. goes on, now maybe they finished it, maybe they haven't, the evaluation process goes on, you realize like, you know what? There are some questions about Caleb Williams and these other prospects where we'd sure. be better off taking the absolute best player available in Marvin Harrison at number one, as opposed to resetting at quarterback. Like I think others can make the decision for them in this case in a perfect world. If, if, if they were not at the mercy of time. However, here's what I'll say before I pass it back to you. Last thing I'll say, promise. There's another phrase that if you're thinking about getting divorced, you're already divorced, you know, or like multiply how long you've been thinking about divorce by two. You know, I, I mean, again, that's what I've heard. That's not me. That's not you. That's what I've heard. That's what I'm saying. Um, what I'm, yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Now. Sorry. I'm not, I'm not trying to speak that over you. Okay. But point being, it's okay. like if they haven't already committed to Justin Fields, it stands to reason that they won't ever. You know what that's I mean? Because right. it's like they, they can't right. sit here and just and just wait when other teams are going to make decisions at quarterback or, you know, other teams are trying to figure out, you know, their rosters or like they can't afford to squat on Justin Fields for too long. Not just because it's, it's, it's not the right thing to do by the player. I appreciate Ryan Post for saying that, but because everybody else ain't going to sit around and wait for them to, to make that decision. So, you know, it's kind of. Yeah, it, it's it, it, it works both ways. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I, and I, I, I wonder if if the Bears actually know where, where Justin Fields is going to go because they can kind of control it in a sense because they control the draft. The Bears, the, 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 the draft starts in Chicago. It cannot start until Chicago. The, really, they got the number one spot. And so some of the teams that want to trade up are trading up for a quarterback. And some of those teams are going to be disappointed. They're not going to get the quarterback that they're looking for. They're, they're going to trade up for one of the top three guys. Chicago can be a big part of determining whether those teams get one of those top three guys. And if they take Caleb Williams, that takes two of them. That takes one off the table. So you only got two. You only got Drake May and Jaden Williams, uh, Jaden Daniels, theoretically, for those teams. Those teams that lose out on the other two might be really in the market for Justin Fields. <laughs> So, mm. and like really Chicago could control a lot of things here, but here's the other thing. Uh, and I, I appreciate what you said and I, I tease you about that dynasty and how often you are tweaking your roster and remaking and resetting your roster almost like every other day, every other day. This is what you do. And it's realistic because there are general managers like this in football like you and we see some of them and we saw them at the combine like the combine is great. You went to the combine. I went to the combine. We've had some great moments in, in, in our in our football coverage days, like intense football coverage days, the beginning of them just connecting with that person, connecting with that person. OK, talking with agents, saying who's who's moving? What what's what's going on? Like really insider stuff at the combine. But there are some general managers and I'm not saying Ryan Poles is, is this guy, but there are some general managers who are so addicted to the deal to mm. making trades. Oh, that's why you brought that okay. after, that's why you brought me up after it all, it all, yeah. okay, it all comes full circle. Gotcha. Okay. After yeah. all of the dealing is done, they don't necessarily have what they need. And so mm -hmm. you say the Bears have a lot of options. Hey, maybe they trade Justin Fields. Maybe they don't. Maybe they trade down. They don't take Caleb Williams. You're in Chicago. And you know what? Your organization has never had a steady quarterback, which is what, which is why to get a quarterback. Forget about this best player available. And yeah, we don't yeah. No, We don't know. We have questions about Caleb. We got questions about Justin. Oh, I don't know. Maybe we just take the best left tackle and the best wide receiver. No, you need a quarterback. That's why Shane well, Waldron's there. 
Shane Waldron well, but, is there to develop a quarterback, whether it's Justin Fields or Caleb Williams. Okay, Caleb. well, that's the key word. Okay, but that's the key word. It's just like, which you know, part of it is the the flashes I've seen from Justin Fields. Development, by the way, is the key word. Part of, part of it is the flashes I've seen from Justin Fields. The other part of it is like not feeling like Justin Fields got a fair shake, which, you know, life ain't fair, but still like, and at a certain point in Chicago, all the quarterbacks can't be the wrong picks. Y'all can't just be that bad all the time at picking quarterbacks. <laughs> You're doing something wrong when it comes to yes, developing <laughs> and supporting court. No, nobody. No, I take it from me. A broken clock is right twice a day and a blind for squirrel finds a nut. There is absolutely no way that in every instance Chicago just picked or passed on the wrong guy. There's no way like they have been awful at developing and supporting who's, said quarterbacks who's done well. I, I, I remember uh, we had Mitch album on the show back in the day and I brought this up to him where he was uh, talking about Detroit coaches. Now this is old Detroit, not not brother from another team of uh, right. team of brother from another. No, Detroit. I know what you said. Who's done said, well after Detroit? Yeah, he said once he said, look at once they come through Detroit. Ooh, that's it. I, right. Who's done well at what Bears quarterback? Has gone through Chicago and then flourished somewhere else. I can't think I don't, of one. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if that's a counter, Am but I'm saying maybe Chicago just ruined them. Maybe Chicago just ruined them, either on the front end or it was they went to Chicago for their career to die. Either way, I, I don't know if that was a counter to my point that Chicago can't develop or support quarterbacks, but both those things can be true. Yes, maybe yeah. they did draft or scout and, and, and select the wrong guy, and maybe that guy ended up in the wrong place. You know, I, whatever the reason is. Justin Fields feels like the latest example of, you know, giving up on a guy too soon before you've actually done all that you can do as an organization. And I think, you know, again, I talked about the job that Ryan Poles is doing restocking the cover with Justin Fields is, is a victim of that in many respects to say nothing of play calling. OK, so on, but on the flip side, on the flip side, and we both agree on this, if, if, if Caleb Williams is that guy. Sorry, you got to do what hell the Cardinals did when they went from Josh Rosen to Kyler Murray in a year. You got to say no. Caleb Justin Fields is a good player, but Caleb Williams is in fact transcendent, and we have an opportunity to get him. But once you get him, guess what you got to do by him? Right. Yeah. You have well, to develop him. You have yeah. to support him. You have to stick with him through thick and thin. Else you'll be right here again in five years. This is the most perpetually rebuilding franchise in the league. They've been rebuilding for both of our lifetimes and then some so or at least it feels like so um, they've, had, they've had flashes they've had moments um, <clears throat> what was I saying oh so yeah I, I I hear you on they need to get this position settled but I do think I do I do think there's more than one path and I, I think I think there's a yeah. th 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 this is not a dilemma this is not a choice between two bad options this is Door number one or door number two, I think, can be a path to success in either case. And I think the same goes for Justin time. Fields. It's an very, exciting time. Very exciting time. This is this is the same goes for Justin Fields. I was thinking about this because we talked about this last week when he unfollowed the Bears and then explained it on the podcast. Why? He just wanted peace. I get it. Yeah. Um, but, you, but you have to unfollow. Do you? Him, you know. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you <laughs> yeah. <it>? Right. <laughs> no, I, I mean, okay. I, I get wanting he peace, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Hey man, I'm um, about to go. He said, I'm about to go on vacation. I, I don't, I don't want it on my timeline. But so, like the Bears are, are the Bears like trafficking in Justin the Fields rumors? <laughs> they're, they're not. They're not actually. They're not. There's just there's there. ways around hey, that. There's, there's if, ways around that. What if the Chicago Bears? That that's us. What if the Chicago yeah. Bears trade Justin Fields to the Falcons? Like I'm that's, that's I mean, a your but that's. The, but it's also not even how Instagram works. Like I'm following a lot of people who don't show up in my timeline because that's just my algorithm. Right. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people follow me and I don't show up in their timeline. That's their algorithm or my poor posting, which was another conversation. Um, thank you for coming to my TED talk. Um, but either way, if Justin Fields stays in Chicago, and I know you had your cup of coffee there. It's a tough town. It is. And it's tough on yes. the quarterbacks, which is another part of it. If he stays in Chicago and Ryan Poles continues to do the job that I think he's doing, then they're going to just they're going to end up get, getting giving Justin Fields 
one or two blue chip receivers in addition to DJ Moore, which they gave him last year. They're going to end up giving him better protection up front. They're going to end up continuing to fortify the defense. He's going to end up in a better uh, situation if he stays in Chicago. If he gets traded, the teams that he's rumored to be uh, headed to, Atlanta or Pittsburgh, we already talked about it. As, I'm not saying that's all they're missing, but those are some excellent situations to go into. You know, those are not exactly rebuilding situations. Those are teams that feel like they're a quarterback away from being taken seriously. So, yeah, and I, you know what? I, I, I don't think he can lose yeah. either. The Bears can lose for once. I don't think Justin Fields can lose in this situation. If he goes to, if you just look at those teams there, you look at those top four teams, uh, Broncos, I don't know. All right, but the only one I don't love teams. is the Patriots. The Patriots is the only one I don't love out of that entire list. I, it, no, no, bro, it, it's just the opposite. The Broncos, I don't love. I'm going to tell you why I, I love these these options for Justin Fields. In Atlanta, he's got Zach Why you don't Robinson love the Broncos? Y'all like the Broncos because okay, they're going to ask him to, to, take, to take off his injury guarantee? But you will get, we'll hey, get you to are, that. Go, go. Hey, <laughs> hey, I was going to say, you already in a relationship. You in a relationship. You, you handle that business first. Don't, hey, hey. Right. You ain't out. What you doing right. out see, here? What you doing look, out here? You ain't... <laughs> You ain't ready to be out here. You need to, you I, got some I, business. I, I, I see. I see how you treated that one. Yeah. 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 And I'm not trying to get caught up in your drama. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was about to take it. I was about to go down another road, but you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'll just say this with those teams on the list that the Falcons have, we know that their, their offensive talent, they got Zach Robinson there uh, who's worked with Raheem Morris. So Raheem Morris head coach, Zach Robinson is your offensive coordinator with the bears. Shane Waldron, man, like you got something. You got the hardware. You got the hardware on the wall, diploma on the wall, whatever. You, you got Geno Smith. We all forgot about Geno Smith, and you were there as part of the Geno Smith comeback story. That's amazing. Yeah. So th you got that guy in Chicago. It, Pittsburgh, you got Arthur Smith. Arthur Smith knows how to uh, uh, work with a talent like Justin Fields, Arthur Smith as an OC. Yes, Arthur Smith as a head coach. Not so much. And then in New England, Alex Van Pelt coming from that Kevin Stefanski Cleveland system, play action, run the ball, strong running game. That's a good setup for him. So where if he goes to one of those you like teams, New England, huh? You like New, uh, New, yeah. New England feels like the yeah. farthest away. Justin uh, you know, Fields. I mean, I mean, I'm mean, sorry. Uh, Justin Fields with with Alex Van Pelt and uh, Gerard Mayo as your head coach. I like it. I like it. A good start. They got the third. I, I, pick. I, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't love this. I don't love this, the skill group. Same issues that Mac Jones had to deal with. But you know, okay. You know, Bailey Zappi. I, well, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't but they, that, that could improve. That could improve. So you know, I mean, hell, yeah, Mac maybe Jones, they end up with Marvin story. Harrison. Maybe they end up with Marvin that's Harrison. Different. Uh, at three, if they get Justin Fields, you get Justin Fields and Marvin Harrison, you cook him with gas. Or is it grease? Grass. Is it gas or grease? No, it's gas. It's gas. I thought so. Some people say grease. Because who's cooking? Like you cook with like uh, we got to go through all the like the cliches and like the oh the yeah, I got, yeah. Just kind of yeah. like break it down. You're cooking with gas. You know, like now you're really cooking with some grease. people. Some people. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Might be electric. Yeah, Might not yeah. be gas. Might be electric. And, you, and like you know, but we all got but, that. We all got that. It, that jar of grease. That's for some strange oh, reason. Old people. It's old nasty. people like right, to keep right, nasty. and reuse. I don't. I. I, yeah, I yeah. You know, like why we have a jar of bacon grease? Uh, what, you know, yeah. who wants to? Yeah. Like, why, I don't understand why we're we're keeping grease. Like, <laughs> can we just, just discard this? And what does? And, and by the way, what the does a squeaky the, wheel get? And by the way, what does a squeaky wheel get? The oil or the grease? Yeah, I say the oil. It's the oil. It's a, it's a oil. Or Earl, it or Earl, oil. or Earl. Where I'm from, Earl. Yeah. Where I grew up is Earl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The squeaky wheel got the Earl. It ain't. No, it's not the grease. It's the oil. I think. Okay. See, once again, we gotta okay. go through all this stuff. So right, anyway, what are we talking about? Oh yeah. Um, Bacon grease. Oh, I was no, I was no. We were talking about cooking with grease or gas, whichever you prefer. If the Patriots got Marvin Harrison at three and traded for Justin Fields, that's what we were talking about. Just to get us back on track. Um, I mean, but look, the Broncos. Look, man, I, he's an upgrade. He's an upgrade right now. From a from a youth 
and ability standpoint to Russell Wilson in my mind. I ra- I rather have I rather bet on just he doesn't have the resume of Russell Wilson. He doesn't have the reputation Ooh, okay. of Russell Wilson. What's up but with this? I would What's rather I rather bet on Oh, here we go. Russell okay, we, about, here we go. Here you go. Here you go. You got to cape up. You got to cape up. No, let, let's talk about yes. it. Russell Wilson is the most confusing polarizing figure in the league because one it's minute everybody's shitting on Russell Wilson and making future jokes but say but I mean but say one wrong thing about Russell Wilson and and the culture seems to come for you I don't understand like are we are we are we all team Russell Wilson are we in? or, or, or I, I don't know I, I don't know I just I call it like I see it I mean I like Russell Wilson I, when when he needs defending I will defend him but I'm not like going to make him somebody that is not what do you mean do you by like, like? define like Define do you like. like him as their start. Okay, if he's your starting quarterback, do you think you can get to the playoffs? If Russell Wilson is your starting quarterback, for the Denver, if you're the Denver Broncos, and Russell Wilson not. is your starter, can you get to the playoffs? I with think him? I think I think they've already answered that question. <laughs> They're trying to do everything they can to get out from under that contract that he's. I know they don't the think so. They, if I they, for, they, for me, no, I, I I I don't I don't want Russell Wilson as my quarterback. Personally, okay, doesn't mean it problem. wasn't okay. doesn't mean they didn't do him dirty with the injury guarantee situation, which you talked about with Brandon Marshall. But that doesn't mean that I want it, that I want Russell Wilson as my quarterback. I think two things and can I'm be not, true. I, I, I think, think Russell Wilson is very limited in, in what in what he brings to the table. I think he's very limited. Now, I'm not saying Justin Fields is no. Okay, here's the thing. Like, if there's a game to win today. I know a lot yes. of people would prefer a Russell Wilson because you've seen him yes, do it at the I highest would. level for a longer period of time. A I would bank on Justin today? Fields. But you would what? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying I understand picking Russell Wilson. I'm saying though, like whether it's a game to win today, whether it's for this season or whether it's building my team, I would rather gamble because it is a bet. It is a bet. I would rather gamble on Justin Fields potential. Yes, I would personally. Like I'm we're talking about the market of quarterbacks. If I'm Atlanta or if I'm Pittsburgh and I'm looking at the available veteran quarterbacks, I would rather Justin Fields untapped potential than the fumes that Russell Wilson is running on at this point in his career. Yep, that is true. And I'm not saying go win, Michael. Go win, go win precisely two Super Bowls in the next five years somewhere else. Go be great okay. somewhere else. Okay, see, see that like, see it's that type of it's that type of derision. <laughs> that tone. It's that the type tone. of it's that type of I see what you're doing. It's that type of sarcasm. Well, not, hey man, that, a, that a really, goal without a plan is a wish. I respect the man for right. having goals. I just would like to see the plan come together, but she's not in total control of that. I, ho- I really hope he lands on his feet. And I'm not saying that sarcastically, facetiously. It's not backhanded. I want him to land on his feet. I really do. I'm not saying Russell Wilson is a great quarterback anymore. I think he was a great quarterback. I think he was. I and think he was a great I, quarterback I really, in Seattle for Seattle. I think he was a great that, quarterback for ooh, Seattle. As, let me tell you. Let me tell you what I don't uh, I don't think I don't think he is who he thought he was way back mm-hmm. when he was sitting in the suite at the Super Bowl with Roger Goodell watching Tom Brady winning in Tampa thinking that he deserved to have that kind of autonomy. He was never Tom Brady. He was never Aaron Rodgers. He was never one of those guys, but he wanted that kind of power and that absolute power corrupted. Absolutely. Well, no, it's funny. Doesn't mean that that means he's not serviceable, but he's not the great quarterback that that he has it that he thinks he is in his mind. That's okay. Let let me tell you a story. Let me tell you. I say the same thing about me. Tell me me a story. story. Not not your not your story. A story. A story. Go. All right. Uh, uh, God, God gave me a brother at birth, and then God gave me another brother when I was about 28, 29 years old, and and that brother, that brother, the, the my, my my other brother, the one I got when I was 28 or 29, says this thing, and I, I wonder if it sounds familiar. Uh, you may I, I don't know, you may not agree with this quote he says, this thing he says. And it's on record. It's been on the air. It's on record. This brother of mine says they're all system quarterbacks. That's what he said. I did say they're that. They're all system quarterbacks. That. So I don't you dare. Don't you that. dare turn around and be like, hey, right, he's not that. who he thought he was. Wait a minute. They're all system quarterbacks, bro. That's what you said. <laughs> I did say that. And so I did say he that. was a system quarterback in to Seattle. An extent. The right you, system. You left you left you left right off the, you left off you left off the qualifier to an extent. 
to an extent. Okay. They're not all, all right. they're not all the same. They're all system quarterbacks, but they're not all the same. Patrick Mahomes is not the same kind of system quarterback that okay. Russell Wilson is. Okay, like some of them are the system, but still my, my point in saying they're all system quarterbacks is that they all need support. They all need support. Some more than others. Russell Wilson well, needed the cocoon you that, that was Seattle more than he thought he did. They all need support. They all need support. So I'm not saying Russell Wilson is a great quarterback anymore or a great. Uh, he's not a great quarterback within the system that he's in. Part of that could be diminished uh, skills. And part of it could be the system around him is eroded or the system is not transparent. And so if you under I see, I understand Russ. You know why I understand Russ? Because I, I view him and this will this will open it you can, up. For you me. can hear Jimmy. I, you can hear Jimmy. I can hear I can hear him. I can understand him. I view Russ through the prism of professionalism. That's his standard. He is now. You may think he's disingenuous to corporate, whatever it is. He is mm-hmm. the professional. That the professional. He thinks it's good. Uh, it's good professionalism to say go Hawks when he was with Seattle, uh, in team spirit. He thinks it's good professionalism. Professionalism to say let's ride. It's all about the team. He thinks he's being professional when he says, "Hey, I committed to Denver, and that's why I'm going to stay in Denver." He thinks he's being professional when he says. I want to win two championships because that's what I'm supposed to do. He would not unfollow the Denver Broncos. He is not going to do that kind of stuff. It's like Russell Wilson is a, whether he's delusional or not. He thinks I'm here. I got my money. So I'm going to make it work right here with the Broncos. Is he crazy? Maybe, maybe a little bit, but I think Sean Payton needs to take some accountability on this too. Russell could be better. Sean Payton could be a lot better. What they did with him is a joke. Yeah, I never. What you talking about the injury or you talking about the way he was used? Talking about the injury? Uh, I'm talking about the way he was used or both. Hey, hey, change your change your contract. That whole change your contract thing. No, no. Hey, don't talk about money with me here. I got an agent for that. Don't 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 even don't approach me during the season talking about some financial stuff that has nothing to do with our next game. So the Broncos handled that very poorly. Russell, I know he's always got a camera crew is always right there. He could be talking to you and all of a sudden snap his fingers and you know, there's a set designer (laughs) right there trying to make the situation right. I mean, I know that kind of stuff rubs people the wrong way. I think he's got a lot of good football left in him. He's only 33. So a lot of good football left for Russell Wilson. I think you think that because of the job that Sean Payton, Joe Lombardi, and Davis Webb did with Russell Wilson this year. Russell Wilson had a bounce back year playing for these Denver Broncos. And as Russell Wilson knows more than anybody because he plays in protection of his statistics, he had impressive statistics, even if he didn't always play winning football. And there's a difference. He had, a, he yes. had impressive statistics, Agreed. even if he didn't always Agreed. play winning football. Okay. Yeah. Having said that, though, I, d- I did find myself scratching my head sometimes at how, um, how they utilized him. It felt, like Russell, it felt like Sean Payton was trying to have Russell Wilson do Drew Brees things in Sean Payton's system rather than always yeah. playing to Russell Wilson's strengths, which he does have some. Um, but that was just my layman's naked eye, you know, what do I know? But that's just what I felt like I was seeing whenever I watched the Denver Broncos on offense. No, I, it, for me, it's not personal. For some people, it is personal. Um, is for Russell Wilson, people, is Russell Wilson an said. image that he carries? Is it my cup of tea? No, it's not. He's not my cup of tea. But I'm not rooting Mike, against my guy. Yeah. Mike, what you said about um, Doc Rivers applies hmm. to Russell Wilson. <laughs> Russell you know, Wilson is the Doc Rivers, Rivers of the NFL. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Can't it, win for it, losing. It's almost like <laughs> this Doc Rivers, not the Doc Rivers we used to have. The Doc Rivers before. Right. Remember, when, he, remember when Doc a, introduced us to Ubuntu? 
<laughs> Duck, oh, Duck was the oh, guy. That guy. <laughs> Duck, Duck, Duck. 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 Hey, Doc, Doc around 2000, when Doc left Boston and went to the Clippers, Donald Sterling's Clippers, and right. after he, and, and Don, after Donald Sterling was out, remember Doc was like the face of he he, he kept it together and right. he kept these guys. Right. His Dude, Doc's approval rating. Lawrence right, Fishburne right is playing Doc. Lawrence Fish, yeah. when you get Lawrence Fishburne playing you, like come on, man. <laughs> you know. <laughs> 2013, 2014, Doc. Well, approval ratings yeah. were high. Okay, right. he had he had right. Jamie Foxx imitating him, doing the voice and the whole thing. So mm -hmm. uh, don't blame Blake. Don't blame Blake. That's like, you know, doing that whole thing. <clears throat> Russell Wilson is is the current doc where no matter what he says, no matter what he does, he really can't win. And so I think it is personal for people that it's it's not in football. I mean, you're not in this category, but some people just like Russ, that name just is mm -hmm. a conversation starter. It's a, de a debate. Hey, let's start oh, no, the debate with this panelist. Touchstone. I, I, I think how you feel about I think how you feel about Russell Wilson for some and, and why you feel how you feel about Russell Wilson uh, for some people says a lot about those people. Um, no, he, yeah. he's uh, there. There, there. There's many. There's plenty of think pieces to be written about about the Russell Wilson conversation. I know my man doing something right. You know he doing something right. Okay. Um, yeah. Talk, yeah. I mean he. Yeah, like, I don't. I don't know. How, I don't yeah, know, I know where much, you're going. <laughs> I don't know. So no, I'm saying, I don't know how much. No, but if we want to be honest about it, I mean, yes, the last two years have been tough, but in life, I don't know how much losing Russell Wilson has done. So if I say, I say can't win for losing in the game of life, I don't know that Russell Wilson has done much losing. So I, I got I hope I hope he bounces back. I really do. But we were talking about Justin Fields. I'm not sure how we got to Russell. Oh, we're talking about Denver. Yeah, no, if, if Justin said, Fields yeah, ended you up said in, you'd rather. In, yeah, you'd rather if one if, with a game to win, you would put the ball in the hands of uh, no, I, I would say I was saying that there was I was saying there was one game to Over. win right now. I think a lot of people and I know would still take Russell Wilson based on his body of work, based on what he's accomplished. I'm saying and can I start that's not a slam dunk for me. And if, if for a season or moving forward, I want to bank on a potential of Justin Fields personally about many of those teams. I'm also assuming that Sean Payton would use Justin Fields uh, to his skill okay. set if he ended up in Denver. That, I'm, I'm assuming that's that. where I would say this question that we ask. Hey. If you have a game to win, all right, who would you go with, especially in football? Now, in, in today's football, I want to know what's available to me. Can I change? Can I can I pick my head coach for this one game? Or do I have to go sure. with the existing what, head coach? What's it, what situation? Uh, can I, right. Can, can I pick right. my offensive coordinator for this game? You know why I, you, I know, you know the existing you know, you know why you want to pick that? You know why you want to pick that? You know why you want all those you want all those answers? Because they're all system quarterbacks. They're all system quarterbacks. <laughs> they're all system quarterbacks. <laughs> to a degree. Um to, to a degree, degree. To, an ex to an extent. Um, to an extent, that's right, to an extent. No, point is, it's like, I think all of those teams we listed, when term the Justin Fields odds, I, f I feel like he would be an upgrade and obviously fit well um, with any of those situations. And that's what, I, just like I'm rooting for Russ to land on his feet, I'm rooting for Justin to flourish in either spot. And I don't know Justin Fields. He don't know me from a hole in the wall. I'm rooting for him to flourish in Chicago or flourish in whatever situation he lands in, and those are some pretty attractive situations. Teams that if the if the Bears don't get a move on, uh, they might end up filling up their quarterback situation or their quarterback vacancy. And that's what I mean. It's like those teams may, may make the decision for them. If the Falcons blow them out of the water with an offer for Justin Fields, okay, they pivot. You know, I don't know that you just give Justin Fields away. Is it? Are, are they just trying to drive up a bidding war? We'll see. You know, Steelers. Steelers don't seem like big spenders in this regard too often, right? They don't seem like the type of team that would typically shell out a lot in by way of draft capital, let alone a contract. Yeah, I'm you glad know, you mentioned hell, that maybe part. Maybe there's something there. That's one element of this. It doesn't seem to be that business mention. model, right? Yeah. Yeah. Raiders. Raiders mention. are sexy. The Raiders are sexy. That's a sexy spot. He's going to his for Justin Fields. He's going to his fourth year. He's going to his mm -hmm. fourth oh, year. Fifth year option. If you don't pick big up, contract. Yeah, if you don't pick up right. the option, you pick up the option. What are you doing? A one year rental for Justin Fields? Right. What are you doing? Well, that's the Bears so situation. If, you, if the if the Bears if you keep Justin to him, Fields, they gotta commit 
two hundred some million dollars to him, most likely. That's right. Or at least a, or at least a fifth year option plus a franchise tag, which goes back to the divorce comparison I said earlier. If they haven't already fully committed to Justin Fields, and by fully committed, I mean screaming for the mountaintops, it stands to reason that they haven't and won't. If they, if they have not announced it, it stands to reason that they have not committed and will not commit because by this point, it feels like the ship probably has sailed. Feels like. In terms of like, will we or will we, or will we not? That's what it feels like. However, I do understand exploring all the options because there are no bad options. All right. Um, the other uh, topic I think we should get into, or well, we got other ones we could get into, but another one in terms of trade winds blowing. Um, and this is probably this feels like there's more smoke than fire here, right? This Justin Jefferson, the Justin Jefferson speculation. Now, Kevin O'Connell, uh, I think he went on PFT um, from the combine and was like, we ain't trading him on this planet or any other planet. But that doesn't stop the speculation because there's going to be speculation so long as he doesn't have a long term contract. Um, forget. Forget what will happen you know what they're saying because everybody lying right about now there's probably people calling um maybe they're taking the calls maybe they're not i want to go into what you're saying which is you wouldn't even pick up the phone if somebody called about just not picking up we're blocking you're not even answering i'm blocking you i'm blocking spam risk this is spam risk and so if i pick it up i'm like it's gonna be the who this how'd you get this number you know maybe cuss them out and then block them like, I, what, what I don't understand, you, you said at the very beginning, you're talking about Ryan Poles and how you praise Ryan Poles because when he got there, the cupboard was bare and they didn't have blue chip talents. A lot of blue chip players on the Bears. And he mm. has gone about making deals, making moves, whether uh, through trades or free agency or the draft, bringing in blue chip players. And so you got a guy like Justin Jefferson. I'm sorry, come on. This is why we love the combine. This is why we love the draft because everybody is looking for a guy like this. And you're not gonna see J Justin Jefferson because of the position he plays, you're kind of stuck. If you think you're gonna reset your franchise by trading Justin Jefferson, that ain't happening. He's not a quarterback. So you're not going to reset your franchise. Ooh, that Justin Jefferson trade, that's going to be our Herschel Walker. Uh, that's going to be our Khalil Mack or whatever it is. That ain't happening. No. And then uh, if, oh, wait, if what you, you do, what do you think? Him, wait, pa wait, wait, pause real quick. Hold that thought. Pause real quick. Like, what do you think you can get, get in a trade for Justin Jefferson realistic, realistically? Or what would you give up for Justin Jefferson realistically? Uh, okay, what I think I can get because you, 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 you know because you know you got to reset the receiver market. Huge, you know you got to get reset the receiver market too. So there's the money that goes with it as well. But what are you giving up for okay. Justin Jefferson? What teams will give up? They'll probably give up a first round pick. They're not giving up three. It's ridiculous. No team is giving up three first round picks for Justin Jefferson. I would because I like him. But in the real world, no. So they probably give you a first round pick and other. Uh, Maybe a, a, another conditional pick. Okay, first round this year, first next year, and then like a second or a third, or a third or a fourth. So you get three picks, possibly two first rounders, certainly not three first rounders. More realistically, so say, a wait, first rounder. So say that one more time. A first rounder? A, a. One first round pick. And, and what else? One first round pick. Definitely, uh -huh. definitely a first rounder, possibly two first round picks, possibly. That's the limit. That, any notion of three first round picks for Justin Jefferson, whoever, if, if that's being reported, Miami, that's being Miami reported, gave up, not true. Miami gave up, Miami gave up five picks, right? But how many, they how gave many up first rounders? They, it was a 2022 20, first, a 2022 20, second, and a fourth. Okay. So three picks in 2022 and then a fourth and a sixth right. in 2023. But, but, one, okay. but to your point, one first. One first. And, okay. And so it changed, it changed their franchise in that, you know, they had a, a they got a, one of the top 10 players in football. I still believe that in Tyreek Hill. Top 10 players in football. And now they are a playoff team that hasn't really won a playoff game. Did it, did, it, did it reset the Kansas City Chiefs? 
I mean, not re- I mean, it's not one of my, my point is it's not one of those trades where you look back and you I remember where I was and this changed the course of the franchise for them. If you're Minnesota, what are you trying to get out of it? You're trying to get out of paying them when the cap just went up thirty million dollars. The largest largest cap uh, spike in the history of the salary cap. What are you trying to do? Why the Packers got a first and second in 2022 for Devontae Adams. Just trying to remember some other big recent big time time receiver okay. trades. Um, yeah, listen, I, the price has got to be do right. It? You get same reason I traded anybody. Ain't nobody untradeable. Ain't nobody untradeable because nobody's untradeable. That that oh, okay. that's but that's, what the, you, that's what I was interested in. Agreed. What am I? Right. Nobody's untradeable, so if, but what? But I, I, I wouldn't to, do it for cheap. I, I wouldn't do a, it just to do what's it. What's the method? What? My, what's my? What's my logic behind it? I have no. There's no. There's no reason for me. I can't believe I'm talking about the Minnesota Vikings like they're my team. But now I'm getting upset. Hey, there's no oh, okay, reason for I, me. Because because I, I was going to ask you. Because I was going to ask you. What did the Vikings won with Justin Jefferson? What did they won? Oh, not much. What did they won? All right. Yeah. What did they won? In recent memory, like and listen, oh, okay. the Vikings, as Vikings fans well know, they have a long history of trading great players, specifically great receivers. So no, I, I get that they've seen this movie before and they're tired of it. But it's just like, look, I'm not saying I, 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 if I'm running the organization, if I'm the Wilfs, uh, if I'm crazy uh, Adolfo Mensa, I, I am not. Um, I'm not trading him to avoid paying him. Obviously, you know, it takes two to come to terms. I'm not trading but them to avoid paying But and they I'm, can't either. Which, what's, what's the question? And why the question I mean, why is, am I doing it? Why? And, 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 oh, and the answer can't be, Of course I can answer well, the question. Uh, uh, no, no, the answer is, no, you know the answer is, the answer is the same as it always is for every team in every situation. Because what's best for the team? Listen, I am not trying. But it's not. Look, what's, but you're not trying, look, you, you, should never, you should never be in the business of sending out blue chip talent. You should never be in the business of trading away talent. You want to acquire talent, which is what they're going to say, or they probably have already said it, in response to the rumors about it. Like, no, we're not in the business of, of, of letting go of great players. But they come and go. Another one comes along. I'm not saying another Justin Jefferson comes along, but he, he was the 22nd pick of the draft. He wasn't the first yeah. receiver taken in that draft. Far from it. They just took yeah. a receiver in the first round last year opposite him. And Jordan Addison, I'm not saying Jordan Addison is Justin let, Jefferson. Let, I'm saying, not, like, you trust you trust your organization if you do it. And again, look, yeah. I would be reluctant to do it. I'm not. Here's another cliche. I'm not shopping Justin Jefferson. We're not. We're not. We have no intention of trading Justin Jefferson. We're not looking to trade Justin Jefferson. But if somebody makes me the kind of offer that I can't refuse, that could maybe not reset my franchise, but set us up pretty, pretty good for the future, I would have to entertain it. And let somebody else pay yeah, him. That's just it. like the, that's the, that's with any player. I'm you can to, you cannot. I, I, the only thing the only thing here. we disagree on, the only thing we disagree on, Michael. Just to be clear, is what you're saying. You're not even picking up the phone. No, I'm gonna listen on everybody. I'm listening on everybody. And if you say the right okay. thing, we got a deal. I'm listening on. I, I will right. never ever close myself off to a trade. Everybody could be traded. Anybody could be traded. I know you wouldn't. I know the hell you wouldn't. Close yourself off to a trade. <laughs> you like, I know you wouldn't, but we're trying well, to you pay build your dues, something. Once you pay your, once you pay your dues and find out, I am going to pay. pay I'm going to do dues it since you call me out and find I'm out. Do it. I'm I gonna, mean, and I'm going to put I didn't the mean notifications about a dozen back off season. No, I'm you gonna don't want to do that. Put the notifications back on. Okay, you don't okay, I should do that because you know, because you know how crazy uh, the the group chat is. But I'm trying to build something with the Minnesota Vikings and part. Justin Jefferson is part of the vision that I have no, for sure for finally oh, no, for sure for finally yes. this is why this, I, damn it. This is why y'all ain't won nothing. So yeah, but I'm untouchable. Take my cheap but shots unto- yeah, but he's this the untouchable. This is why I know he's untouchable. Not untouchable. That's all. That's, that's all I'm just saying. Like, that's all like, I'm saying. That's all like, I'm saying. I'm not saying trade him. I'm not advocating a, for them to trade him. But this is a blue book. This is a blue book essay here. I need the blue book essay and you need to and I need some quote analysis. I need multiple sources. If you're going to trade them, I want a good essay on what your vision is. If You can't give me that. Mm-hmm. No, we're not trading Justin Jefferson. I know it's a franchise 
Hey, they moved on from Randy Moss. Oh, great receiver. Moved on from Randy Moss. Moved on from Steph Diggs. They're talking about, they can't help themselves. Why don't you just sit down somewhere? Hey, Minnesota, just sit down. <laughs> just focus. Enjoy you need to it. focus. You need to Enjoy focus. That's our problem it. as a people. We don't have enough focus. Just sit down somewhere and focus. Artists. You know? The guy's an artist. The guy is Oh, he's amazing. incredible. He's incredible. He's, in the he's incredible. But there's absolutely nobody, nobody, that I would say I would not listen on. No. Nobody, he, he ain't good enough to be untouchable. He's incredible. And you know, Best in the this, is what they need to, this is what they need to think about. Who's going to be your quarterback? Hey, well, who's going to be throwing <laughs> to Justin Fields? And, and, and now, as much now love... We're, now we're talking. As, now we're talking. As, I'm as sure he wanted the same thing. As we gave the pastronaut, Joshua Dobbs, mm -hmm. part of the reason Justin, Fe Justin Jefferson got hurt last year, that whack pass... <laughs> That Dobbs threw him, threw him like a, threw, threw him the ball like a, a hospital ball, right over the middle, and Justin Jefferson doing what Justin Jefferson does, he actually well, hey, it's a ball, it's probably twelve yards off target, but I'm gonna do my uh, my, my Spider Man thing and I'm gonna just go you know reach for it and get it, and it got popped, and so he had just come back from an injury, he's trying to catch this ball from Dobbs and he goes right back up like. Come on. The problem is their quarterback. The problem it is always has their, wide, been. Their, their star wide receiver. Right. No, for sure. For sure. So I, that's all I'm saying is I just don't think you ever won anything with him. He's a big part of wanting to win moving forward. I'm not saying you trade him because you haven't won anything with him. Just to be clear, I'm not saying, oh, well, you know what? We might as well just get rid of good players because, you know, what have we done? What have you done for me lately? No, he's a great player and he's a foundational player. And whatever quarterback you bring in will benefit from throwing to Justin Jefferson. What I am saying is nobody's untradeable. And so you're not going if, if you, to, you're not going to say, hey, well, we can't trade Justin Jefferson when the path to winning may be liquidating the asset that is Justin Jefferson. Um, but it sounds like you're just not in a very engaging mood right now in general because you're also not looking to trade <laughs> Ladarius Sneed. <laughs> um, right? Hey, you, al you also... Oh, 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 good. Oh, glad you brought this up. Okay. Oh, my I'm just like, man, you just... You just I, <laughs> Thank no, you. No, 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 uh, no... Why? This is an alley -oop for me. Oh. Like, I just you just don't, even call, don't even call Michael Holly. I want to mention this. I want to mention this. We talked about so many things, as you correctly pointed out from the Super Bowl. You correctly pointed out that we spent way too much time talking about Kyle Shanahan and should he have taken the ball first in overtime? It was like a made up controversy. It was not the reason that the San Francisco 49ers lost the game because they, uh, they took the ball first in overtime. We spent a lot of time talking about that. Spent a lot of time talking about Patrick Mahomes. What we didn't spend a lot of time talking about is your vaunted San Francisco 49ers and Debo and Ayuk. And you know why those guys were silent? You know why those guys were silent in the Super Bowl? Because on Legere one side Sneed. they had Trent McDuffie and, and the other side they had Jerry Sneed. Sneed. Oh, yeah. locked down. Lock, you ain't going nowhere. Nothing, nothing. Debo, where's Debo? That's my bike. I ain't heard Debo. I ain't heard Debo's name in the Super Bowl. Where Ayuk? What? All, all these weapons? All these weapons? That dude is a stud. And as I mentioned before, the cap went up. You could do it, Kansas City. Get that man a contract. Get Lejarius Sneed paid. You can get him paid. There's no way. I, I love what they have going on those corners. Like, like, let's go old school. This is this is Haynes and Hayes. I mean, those are two great wow. corners. <laughs> and and that's why, hey, ask Steve Spagnolo. Ask him. There's a there's a style they can play. There are chances they can take because that duo, for my money, that's the best duo. That's the best cornerback duo in the NFL. Right there. Listen, Sneed and McDuffie. Uh, 
I I love Jerry Sneed. But I, um, but I wanted to take, I, but I wanted to take my shot though. I wanted to take my shot at the Niners. I know you did. I'm right. just gonna, I'm, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ignore that. I'm gonna ignore that. No, I listen. You ain't said nothing wrong. You just left out one name. I think I don't. I don't remember you mentioning his name. But you know, you know what helps the back end is when you got a Chris Jones collapse in the pocket. Uh, Chris yes. Jones got to get paid too. This goes back to when we talk about Patrick Mahomes and Patrick Mahomes. You know, not taking all the money he could so that they could you know keep the talent around him. So Patrick Mahomes probably always like. Y'all better not tell me y'all ain't got no money for nobody else. <laughs> I don't want to hear y'all ain't got no money for nobody else. Especially with the with the salary cap going up, like you mentioned. Um, everybody got their hands out. Now everybody got their hands out with that cap, that cap information. And yeah. NFL was like, oh, uh, we had to, why do we have to make this a big headline? Why can't, why can't we just like uh, you know keep this quiet? Because everybody is looking at it saying, hey, I, I mean they were teams I, I you, and, they, and they and they mentioned it. We were in we were in cap jail, if you believe in that. We were in cap yeah. jail, and now we're not because we didn't anticipate this spike. I think um, I think you're right. I think you do everything possible to keep that tandem together. I think you do everything possible to keep a Jerry Sneed. But like, I I feel the same. Like, look, man. Like, good organizations they don't feel like one player makes a break, makes a break and now I sound like rest in peace, Jerry Krause, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. uh, great organizations, organizations win championships, not win players, championships. <laughs> right? No, I mean, but seriously, like, I mean, I feel like this is one of those teams where, you know, if for some reason they can't come to terms and they do end up trading them. I mean, look, they traded Tyreek Hill. I, I, I know it may not be apples to apples, but it's the same fruit from the same tree that continues to bear the fruit of championships in Kansas City. Like it's, it's um, I, I as long as they got Mahomes on offense, and ideally they can keep a Chris Jones. I don't I don't know that anybody is irreplaceable okay. in Kansas City, okay. besides besides Patrick Mahomes. I've, I, no, I, I, and, I, I, and I, well, I'm, 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 I've seen I'm, that he's a, he's a fantastic player. Before. Oh, you've seen you've seen that movie before. Yes, you have. You've seen that, that docu series before. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. You've seen that ten hey, part series oh, before. <laughs> as as long as we have, you know. If we have 15, as long as we have 12, as long as we have 18, you know, all these great quarterbacks. For sure, for well, sure. Those for great sure. quarterbacks say, well, Those system too, quarterbacks. Those, they, those you know system they quarterbacks. Because <laughs> Patrick, Patrick Mahomes is able to put up 25 points and win because of LeJarrius Sneed and, and company. For sure. For yeah. sure. Oh, or for or sure. he was able to put up 17. He was able to put up 17 and win a conference championship game. 17. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't just no, I'm not, can't just throw him out there and say that's I'm enough. not I'm not I'm not letting him walk out the door. But I'm I'm just I'm not saying, you know, I'm keeping him at all costs. At all costs. Because you gotta build a team. You gotta build a team. You gotta build an entire roster. They're doing something right. They didn't won two Super Bowls since they traded Tyreek Hill. They're doing something right. I, I think I, I think I, I, I vacillate on that depending on the organization that we're talking about, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? Like, again, this is, we agree. You try to keep Snead. You try to keep everybody, but you can't always keep everybody. We've seen that with dynasties. Typically, they do get picked apart. Guys perform like that on a big stage. They want to get paid more money than maybe you, you think you can afford in terms of your, uh, your accounting. But if it's the Ravens, if it's the Chiefs, if it's the Steelers traditionally, if it's the, what the Patriots used to be, Certain organizations, the Niners, certain organizations, I'll I give the benefit of the doubt when it comes to their team building. You know, hmm, other organizations, I'd be like, what are you? I'd be like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? What are you, doing? Doubt, what are you man. thinking? You know, I do. Get the Niners, you know, huh? I do. You know, uh, I do. All those, all those other, all those other teams you mentioned have won Super Bowls in the 21st century. Um, just one, you know what? Just, you just know who doesn't them, get the benefit of the doubt? One of them having. Who? You know who doesn't get the benefit of the doubt? The Jets. Who? The, the Jets get smoke. <laughs> the Jets, the Jets get smoked. smoke. They get smoked and roasted. Bro, what, I mean, how would you like them? Smoked or roasted? Nicole Hardman uh, went back to Kansas City, catches the game winning touchdown in the Super Bowl, um, and appears on the Pivot podcast and says this about culture or lack thereof uh, in New York. 
Like, and I ain't trying to bash nobody like that, but it's like, y'all treat certain guys that shouldn't be treated like they should be treated. And it's like, I don't understand where y'all feel like that I don't compare or I can't compete with any of these guys that y'all play in front of me. You know what I mean? And I just feel like it's not an established coaching staff there as well. Like, you just got a new coaching staff that came in, you know, and like, it's no standard there. It's like, everybody do what they want to do. So you could tell the defense got a, they got a, a standard, but the offense is just like, all right, we'll just figure it out. It's Aaron show. Mm -hmm. Let Aaron do what Aaron do, you know what I mean? But then when Aaron go down, it's like, we don't know what to do. Bro, even though, like our training camp was cake, like up there. And I ain't no knock on the jet, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to ever go back there, but just, ain't no knock on them. It's just like, guess what? After this, you ain't. Oh, no. No trip. No, at all. It's not that the playing with the Jets is just like the lies and the way they handled me. Paul, like, it, I didn't like it at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't do that to a player, bro. Like, a player that you paid at that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you talking about, oh, we're going to get you players, this and that, and I'll pay one to play? Oh, no. Come on. We got something got to shake, bro. Like, what, yeah. what are we talking about, bro? Yeah, I mean, he had a lot more to say than that. Um, yeah. You know, he talked about uh, just the... He talked about, hey, look, I've, I've seen what winning looks like. All right. Well, I think the viral quote that's yep. going around is like, I've seen what I've seen what winning looks like. Uh, this ain't it. You know, like yeah. it just wasn't. Yeah, a, I love that. It just wasn't. A, that's my the, favorite. It wasn't. A, you used the word earlier, professionalism. It wasn't a level of professionalism. Um, uh, there wasn't, a, I guess, my word, not his, an urgency in the way that they did things that, you know, contradicted what he'd experienced in Kansas City. And it's, it is weird to sign a guy in free agency. And he hasn't always been a go-to guy. He's never been the go-to guy in Kansas City. But how could the Jets not find more of a role for McCole Hardman? But, you know, they're the Jets. But it, it didn't stop there. It didn't stop there. Um, Deion Dawkins from the Bills went on Vlad TV. And he said, I hate them. All of them. Now, he was talking about the altercation he had uh, in the tunnel last season. He said, I hate all of them. He says, when it comes to sports, right, there's people that play the sport because they love the sport, and then there's people that play the sport just to try to be cool. I feel like they play the sport to try to be cool. Like, those are a bunch of dudes that just want to take pictures on Instagram. That's whack. <laughs> I, I, that resonated with me. I, for, for me. For me, that ain't even about the Jets as much as it's about just, like, the world we live in right now. Because they got a lot of people like that. They got a lot of people like that. They just want the picture. They yeah, just want um, the picture. Yeah. You said a lot of people. They ain't really trying to. They uh, ain't really trying to do the I work. Say most. Yeah, they ain't trying to. They, they they want they want the likes. They want the follows. Yeah. They want the engagement. They don't want to do the work. They don't want. Ironically, they don't want the story. They want the glory, but not the story. They don't want the story. Yeah. They don't want what goes into it. They just want the picture. They just want the highlight. Got a lot of people like that. Yeah. So that, that 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 hit that landed. I was like, okay. I was like, I, I feel you on that. But the Jets in general, like I yeah. just I just don't know how much people could talk about them. And like, at what point is it not true? <laughs> you know what I mean? My, uh, <laughs> what, what, there got to be some know, Michael, credibility to what what these people are saying, right? I, I feel I feel a little uncomfortable with this topic. I'm uncomfortable. I mean, this is punching down. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's the Jets. It's the Jets, y'all. I'm right. uncomfortable because I'm un I'm uncomfortable Come because on, there right. are a lot of people in that organization that I know and respect. I do. There's a lot of people in that organization I know and respect. So I'm uncomfortable with it because I'm just like, I'm just like, like, hey, listen. And this is one disgruntled ex-Jet, which is, there's a list of yeah. those, disgruntled ex-Jet and one yeah, division yeah. rival. So I, th I, I think we do have to consider the source, but it, it, it feels like, it feels on brand. What is it about this organization that it can't seem to straighten up and fly right? You know? It, Maybe it, it's just the quarterback it, got yes. hurt last year. If Aaron Rodgers doesn't get hurt last year, if Aaron Rodgers does not get hurt last year, which is a big if, are we having a different conversation about the New York Jets? No. Will we be having a different? No, no, will we be no, having a different no, no. conversation about the New York Jets? Will we be having a different conversation about them this year if Aaron Rodgers presumably stays healthy? Because again, 
the common denominator, whether you're talking about the Jets or for different reasons, the Vikings or the Bears or any of the teams we've talked about, quarterback. Quarterback. Patriots didn't have a quarterback. Patriots, they're doing a 10 part series about the Patriots and why the quarterback left. They ain't have a quarterback, and where'd they go? Where'd that organization go? To shit. Where'd Bill That's Belichick right. go? Nan, Nantucket. Nantucket. Mike, the Jets ain't never boat. been able to find a quarterback for an extended He's on period some of boat time. Right now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's that uh, simple. If it's that simple. If 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 our grandfathers uh, were still alive, uh, they'd be preaching on this. They'd say, "Listen, uh, we, we're gonna talk about the least of these." We're talking about the least of the, and looking out for the least of these. <laughs> then you know we're not gonna make fun of the uh, of the of the of the sorry New York Jets. You're gonna embrace them. You're gonna try to build them <laughs> up. So uh, I mean, it's easy to talk. Of course, of course the Jets don't know winning. Is is that even real, Miko Hardman? You're too young, Miko. You're too young. You're too young to know uh, how funny that statement is. Of course, they're the Jets. No, they don't know winning. No, there's no standard. Of course, they've got an inexperienced coaching staff and the owner already said it when they don't make the playoffs this year. There'll be in yet another inexperienced coaching staff and front office staff that will take over for Robert Sala and Joe Douglas. This is what the Jets do. You've talked about adulting is real. Jetting is real too. Nicole, I'm not surprised, but I was entertained yet. Not surprised. <laughs> right, right. You entertain me, <laughs> but it entertains yeah, me. Yeah. Now you entertain. <laughs> right. Hey, this was entertaining, brother man. I appreciate you. Uh, I'm about to go finish adulting, and I will talk to you next week. <laughs> hey, uh, I hope I hope cleaning up uh, goes well for you. Uh, no other no other issues. Just keep it dry. Keep the area dry, man. Bruh. I remember. You know when you was when you were young, your mom would be like, "You gonna wish you gonna wish you had this." You're going you to wish you were living under my roof with no responsibilities. You keep talking about you can't wait to leave. Right. I, you know I tell my children that all the time. You don't want these problems. You do not want these problems. Oh. All right, man. That's right. See, all right. Exactly. I'll talk to you. Now, how many times have I said that? I've said that a lot of times. Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.